guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards. Thanks for joining today. Today we are going to be doing rookie card rankings. This is the second episode in the series. Last week we did Mookie Betts, this week we're going to do Mike Trout. Rookie card rankings is where we are going to take each player's rookie cards and rank them from, from worst to best, from top to bottom of this pyramid. It's going to be a combination of iconic and value. It's kind of what gets the formula for this ranking. So they might not be perfect in value in regards to where they're at now, but I think in the long run, they will be more valuable and more iconic for certain cards. So they might be slightly ahead of others. It'll make sense as I explain it all. There's three rules that I try to follow on these videos to make it super simple. The first one is their base cards only, non-autographs only because uh, it can be a very different video if you include autographs on certain sets. As well, they have to be based like non-insert cards. So for Mike Trout, I'm excluding some inserts that he has in like Bowman's Best or other products as well, just because it would take too long. Then this excludes like um, home run derby cards for modern players, like the home run derby rookie cards for like Cody Bellinger. Cards like that, we're gonna keep those out and they have to be rookie year. This may be different for maybe one or two cards per player only because a couple of them are iconic enough to throw in. But if I included everything prospect wise, it would be a forever video again because players sometimes have three or four years of prospect cards before they're in big league products. So let's get it going. The first card that we have is going to be a 2011 Obach uh, card of Mike Trout. This set did not last super long, but it is relatively a pretty cool set. This card came out in 2010 and 2011 with the same image of Trout, but different backgrounds. This is the mini version. There's full size and there's minis. I prefer the minis over the full size and there's different images of Trout on both the minis and the full size with different backgrounds. So tons of variations and it gets kind of confusing and for that reason it dilutes itself and that's why it is number 15 on the list. So we're gonna put this down number 15. Number 14, we have a 2011 Bowman's Best Mike Trout. This was not categorized as a rookie, it was categorized as a prospect card, and on top of that, it just isn't super collected. I think it's a really good looking card. I really think that it was a, it, it's one of my favorite Mike Trout cards. I don't own this right now, but I will pick one up. They're cheap, well defined cheap. For Mike Trout, cheap is you know 80 to $100. But it's not an insert, this was actually, uh, there's a base set of Bowman's Best for 2011, and there's a prospect set. So I count this as a base card because it's in that big prospect set. So that is number 13. Sorry, number 14. Now up at number 13, we have the 2011 Topps Pro Debut Mike Trout. This is the same case, last week we talked about Mookie Betts, how he had a Pro Debut and a Topps flagship card in the same set. That's the same case with Mike Trout. And this happens just because a lot of times they don't expect the player to make the big leagues and then they debut middle of the year or later of the year, so they have both. But this is a pretty cool card. This is his second pro debut card. He has a 2010 pro debut and he has a 2011 flagship. So because of that, it's kind of the least valuable of the three, probably a pretty good margin. Again, probably around a hundred, $125 card. So I'm gonna put that one down here. And that one was number 13. We're gonna hop into number 12 right now. With number 12, we have the 2011 Heritage Miners Mike Trout. This card, I think, is underrated, really undervalued. He does not have a 2011 Heritage rookie card. His 2012 Heritage, that card is probably worth more than this minor league card, and technically this one is more so of a rookie than the other Heritage. I understand that is in an Angels uniform and this is not, but this came out his rookie year, and it's a pretty good pose of Mike Trout, pretty cool card. Honestly, the pose is very similar to his 2009 Bowman Chrome autograph. Uh, so I think this one's underrated, but this is going to be number 13, sorry, number 12. Up at number 11, we have the 2011 Playoff Contenders Rookie Card from Panini of Mike Trout. This card is interesting. It's no logos. It's like the definition of pajama cards. You can see his hat's blurred out, pretty basic, kind of looks like an advertisement that you would see. He had his rookie year, he was uh, the advertisement for a hot dog company. I think it's Nathan's Hot Dogs. I could be wrong, but I'll put that on the screen as well. But it looks just like this photo. So <laughs> for me, it's kind of an underwhelming photo of Trout, not an action shot, just kind of him standing in a studio holding a ball. But it's only one of two true rookie cards from Panini. 
his rookie year. Uh, the other one is much, much higher on this list. But for that reason, it's lower. It's still, it does have, you know, if you look on here, it has that rated rookie logo. It's still a Panini insert, so not an insert, a Panini base card. So I think it does deserve more value than where it's at now. But it's kind of one of the more forgotten about trout cards because of that reason. So that one we're going to put down in the bottom shelf as well. And we will now, I'm actually going to spread these out. I want to move to the upper tier. Those are the bottom four, I would, bottom five, I would say. And now number 10, we have the 2010 Pro Debut Mike Trout card. Very cool card in my eyes. This is his first year of actually having a base card. He has some cards, like he has his 09, Ster 09 Bowman Chrome autograph, 09 Sterling autograph. He has his uh, 2009, he has some Don, not Don Russ. He has one other set 2009, um, and then I'll show it on the screen as well. But it's just not super valuable, but this is his first card on a flagship design. This is the 2010 design for the actual Topps flagship. This is pro debut, but it has him in his Angels uniform, and it's a great picture of Trout. So for me, this is a super undervalued card. So it has lots of parallels, and the parallels command really big money. And honestly, these cards are hard to find, especially in good condition, because again, a lot of the minor league sets are aimed at younger audiences, and because they're not a huge uh, price tag on them. So I think this one is a very good card to look at for a long-term value. Like, you know, he has his 2011 Pro Debut, 2011 Heritage, all these 11s, but this is his probably best 2010 card. All right. Next up, and this is the only, I believe the only, or one of the only two 2010 cards I put in because it is such an iconic, in my eyes, card, being in the Angels uniform and a great action shot. Next, we have at number nine, 2011 Bowman Draft Paper Rookie Card of Mike Trout. So this one, there's a Bowman Chrome variation that's a lot more popular on the list. You'll see that consistently throughout almost all Bowman products. The Bowman paper is not worth nearly as much. But for Mike Trout, this card is an awesome card. This card is extremely hard to it's extremely hard to grade. These corners and edges chip like crazy with this black border. So the, the actual PSA 10 of this might command close to the PSA 10 of the Bowman Chrome because there's hardly any of them. So this is one that I would look at in a high grade, even in a low grade. It's a great rookie card. It's affordable. You probably can get it for 150 to 200 dollars. Maybe slightly more now with how the market's gone up in January. But great picture of Trout in that batting stance being a lot more active than some of his other cards we've looked at. So I'm going to put that next to the pro debut. After that, we have a card that I think goes under the radar. This is the 2011 ETOPS Mike Trout Miners card. So ETOPS was an online TOPS exclusive. You can see LeBron rookies in ETOPS all the way through 2011, where 2011 was actually the last year. It essentially was their goal. Tops was trying to incorporate the internet more. And so they were doing their best to have like cards become something bigger online. And it just kind of fizzled out because whenever you got a card, you had to pay like $10 to ship it to you. And at the time, cards weren't popular like they are now. And so a $5 card would cost $10 to ship. So it's $15 for the card to get it into your hands, which was tough. But for that exact reason, a lot of ETOPS accounts didn't redeem their cards and get the physical copies. This card does not have any parallels. It's just the base and there's 799 of them, nothing else. There's no 101, there's no 150, it's just the 799. And there's speculation there's less of those on the market because not all of them were redeemed. So it's a great card to look for and look at. They're not cheap. I think the cheapest you can find them on eBay is about $1,000. Uh, from now on, all the cards are gonna be almost $1,000 plus. I would put this a little higher, but because it is for value wise, but because it is him in a minor league uniform, he has a major league ETOPS card we're gonna get to, it kind of pushes this one down. It's just not one that a ton of collectors want. It's only really valuable because of scarcity, because it's such a limited supply, but its market cap would be much lower than the average Mike Trout rookie card. All right, so next up, we have, we're getting into his more high end iconic rookie cards. This is the 2011 Topps Finest Rookie. 2011 Finest is a fantastic set and a very undervalued set. He has base cards, he has refractors, and then it's the re regular refractor rainbow. It's one of his few sets that actually has those as a rookie. He doesn't have a Topps Chrome, does not have a Topps Chrome update. That did not exist until 2000, 2013. So Topps Chrome update came out. So 2011 Finest is kind of the best you're gonna get. On top of that, 2011 Finest has one of his two rookie autograph cards. He only has two sets of rookie autographs, and this is one of them. Uh, it's on, it's actually his only on-card rookie autograph as well. So 
It's a very popular set, and I think after a while, these will catch on. They're notoriously hard to grade. They get tons of surface chipping out of the pack. They have surface lines, and the edges chip easily as well. So tough grade to get. If you want to get a high grade, they're going to be expensive. You can find these all over with tons of surface blemishes. If that's what you're looking for, you just want a Mike Trout card, you can probably get it for around $200 to $300, so pretty cool. Now we're getting into the big dogs. We have the 2011 Bowman Draft Mike Trout. These are gonna start costing you a little bit more. Just a PSA 9 of this is about seven or 800 bucks. But this is the big brother to this Bowman Paper Draft. Uh, this is the Bowman Chrome Draft, which is a better card for a lot of reasons. One, because it's more sought after with that chrome finish. Does not have a Topps Chrome card at all. So this, and there's one more Bowman Chrome we'll talk about, are the most sought after chrome rookie cards of Trout. Good action shot of him. This is the second release of Bowman Chrome. The first one, I'll talk about it again, is the first Bowman Chrome, and this is the Bowman Chrome draft, so it came out later in the year, and for that reason, it's not as popular. There also was more of this card printed than the Bowman Chrome that we'll show later. So this one is down here. Still, it's getting close to that next tier of higher-end rookie cards. So now, that was number, where was that, number six? Now we are at number five, and now we're getting into one of my absolute favorite cards. In my opinion, Mike Trout's best looking rookie. In person, I have one. The refractor shine is amazing. They put a really hard border around Trout's body to highlight his uh, stance. There's only 999 of these cards available. And no, again, no, no parallels, nothing. There's just 999. For example, of the top's finest down here in the Bowman Chrome, there's probably what, two or 3,000 or more of just the base and then probably another thousand or more of the refractor parallels. So this card is extremely short printed, was only available online and there's almost not all 999 of them made it into circulation. There are probably still a couple sitting at tops that will never get claimed because the ETOPS account of some people was forgotten or closed or any of these things. So this is number five. These in a high grade, they came in a mag case um, like a Magna, like like the one touch, you know, the magnetic ones. And so those are notorious for scratching surfaces. So out of, the, out of the case, they almost always scratched up the cards. So they weren't easy to grade either. PSA nines go for around $1,500. Um, and that's kind of what you're looking for a Roth too. Number four, we have the 2011 Bowman Sterling Mike Trout. Bowman Sterling is an extremely underrated product across the board for almost every single year from 2011 on. And then around 2015, it kind of changed products. But 2011, 2014, for rookie cards, it's an awesome product. You only got one base card per pack, and so you might get 18 autographs in a box, but you only get six base cards. And the base card set isn't massive, but it is over 50 uh, cards, so it, you know one in 10 boxes is gonna get you a Mike Trout rookie. And these cards are short printed, and they're tough to grade as well. Big chrome surface that is that can easily get um, surface issues, whether it's scratches or chips. Uh, I believe the PSA Pop is below, PSA 10 is below 130 on these. Compare that to his more iconic cards that have thousands, like like literally 5,000 for the Mike Trout Tops update. So this is a card that does deserve some more value. It's not from an iconic set. Bowman Sterling isn't a huge name on the market. And so for that reason, it's lower. This is the other set that has Mike Trout autographs in it. There is the base version. Base is a refractor of only 109. So even the base version is very tough and it's a sticker autograph which holds the value down, but still a really cool card to get. So this is one of my favorites, really good looking in person and they have refractors. The refractor version of this is numbered to 199 and down and they're worth a lot of money. <laughs> so I, I wanna pick one up and I will eventually. I missed out on a good one, but a 2000, sorry, a PSA 10 of this is gonna be around 2000 to $3,000, so getting a lot more expensive. Now we have the other Panini card, and this is one that a lot of collectors will not recognize, but this is going to be the Mike Trout Prime Cuts rookie. Only 99 of these were made, and if you can even find one, you're gonna have to pay a lot of money. I believe the last BGS 8, sorry, BGS 9 went for over $3,000. So if you got a PSA 10 copy of this version, it's gonna be a, you know, around a eight to $10,000 card. They, it's not really iconic, but it is one of two cards of Trout from Panini as rookie year. So this is his best Panini rookie. Super short printed, hard to grade, because you know these thicker stocks from Panini, all these prime cut sets chip really easily. High grades of these go for a lot of money. And that one is number three. 
At number two, we have the 2011 Bowman Chrome Mike Trout. This is his first Bowman Chrome card, so it kind of takes over his Chrome rookie that a lot of players get with the Topps Chrome. This is that iconic card for Trout. Great, great photo. You know, it's an interesting photo because you can see in the background actual individuals, this guy with overalls is due to sunglasses, but you can see the young Mike Trout. And on top of that, the refractor versions sell for a ton. PSA 10s of this are around $3,000. They may have gone up since this last spike. I haven't checked that, but around 3,000. PSA 10s, there's one on auction with like days left and is already at 7,000. So notoriously off-centered left to right. Any card you'll see, even the PSA 10s are almost all off-centered left to right. But great card, hard to grade, refractors are rare, the base card's rare, and this one commands a lot of money. So we only have one card left, that was number two. Number one is one that we are all gonna recognize, and that is the 2011 Topps Update, Mike Trout. This is the card that is probably the second most iconic card, well, maybe third, uh, for pure rookie cards behind Mickey Mantle and um, Ken Griffey Jr. with his 1989 upper deck. This is the card of the last 20 years, probably the most recognized between any sport. This card is always off center, very tough centering, has a strong border, so it's easy to see the off centering. It was not taken well care of very much because it was 2011. Nobody cared as much about it. Mike Trout had a very rough rookie year. He only had like a 680 OPS, didn't really have much, just had a cup of coffee in the big leagues and then started the next year in Salt Lake even in AAA. And then he came back up to the big leagues in 2012 and killed it. And that's kind of where this card saw momentum. A PSA 10 of this goes for around $3,300 right now. I would not be surprised if during the season, if he has another MVP type year, he hits four or 5,000. There's about 5,000 PSA 10s and I believe 8,000 to 9,000 graded total. So it's about a 55 to 60% gem rate. Uh, so it's not super easy to grade, but it's not necessarily the hardest. It's just iconic. And for being an iconic card, there's not many. If you look at the Soto, there's already like Soto to Cunha, I say this all the time, just to kind of give reference for modern cards. There's gonna be around 20 to 25,000 when it's all said and done PSA 10s of each of their rookie cards. Right now there's about 17,000 PSA 10 Acunas and about 14 to 15,000 PSA 10 Sotos of their update. So to only have 5,000 and it's been out 10 years shows that it really is a lot more scarce. Also, the parallels of this card, because of the 2011 border, they are extremely tough to grade and they are worth a huge amount of money. I don't let that factor into the decision making of why I put it here, but just know if even a gold in bad condition of this card is gonna be, like, so like a, I have a gold BGS8 out of 2011, that's probably still a $2,500 card. If you have a gold and a PSA 10, you're probably looking around $15,000. Um, and if you wanna get even higher, the target red is the, came out of the Walmart, I mean, sorry, forgive me, the Target packs, and those are gonna be even more expensive right around, you know, in a PSA 10, probably 30 to 40,000, I'm guessing. A PSA 7 went for around $10,000 recently. So these are my picks in the order I would put Mike Trout rookie cards. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you agree, disagree, what your thoughts are and what you would take. And please like and subscribe. I know this was a longer video, so I apologize, but it is the GOAT, Mike Trout. I wanted to include a little bit more info on all his rookies than others. So thank you for your time, guys. Have a great day. And please, again, let me know your thoughts. See you later.